Good morning and welcome to Montrose Fresh from the Montrose Daily Press. It's Monday, February 8th, and we're here to bring you a closer look at our top stories, events, and more that matter to us here in Western Colorado. Today, the Rotary Amphitheater Project was approved during the latest City Council meeting. Today's episode is brought to you by Elevate Internet. Whether it's for your home or your business, they offer the best speeds at the best price. Right now, if you refer a friend, you can get $25 off. Give them a call for more information at 844-386-8744 or visit them at elevateinternet.com. Before we begin, we'd like to highlight J.C. Casebolt from the MHS girls basketball team. Offensive rebounding is often a silent skill that can be overlooked, but when a player finds continued success with it, it's noticeable. J.C. Casebolt, after grabbing four rebounds and scoring nine points in the season opener against Delta, has found similar success. In Thursday's loss to Coleridge, she scored 12 points, a team high. Casebolt is one of four seniors on the 2021 team. Coach Steve Skiff said that J.C. has an outstanding knowledge about finding the ball. Casebolt helped the Indians take a 20-17 lead into the half on Thursday. She added two steals and an assist in the Delta loss and was a near-perfect 4-for-5 from the field. Now our feature story. The next item on our agenda tonight is um, item number 9, which is the Rotary Amphitheater CMGC Contract Award. And this is the awarding of budgeted funds of $3.2 million for construction of the Rotary Amphitheater. The Rotary Amphitheater project was approved during the last city council meeting. The city awarded $3.2 million of budgeted funds for construction of an amphitheater at Ceres Park. This project included the award of a contract with Stryker and Company, who will serve as the construction manager and the general contractor. It will feature a stage, a recessed viewing area, a sound booth, restrooms, additional parking, a back access road to the stage area, and designated spaces for vendors and merchandise. According to the Community Impact Report, uses for the amphitheater could include music, theater, festivals, nonprofit events, and other events like movies or workout classes. The stage would be about the same size as the stage in the Montrose Pavilion. With a stage that big, there's a potential to host bigger acts and shows, regional orchestras, and symphonies. Public Works Manager Jim Sheed said that the priority and challenge of the construction project was to create as little environmental impact as possible. Here he is during the February 2nd City Council meeting. We did several rounds of large group meetings to kind of determine the the scope of this project and the size and the needs and how it would be used. And through that, we we developed obviously the size of the building and the and the intent of the project. And at the point that the location was determined, when the decision was made to put it in this place, uh, we kind of challenged our design team at that time of accomplishing this with as little environmental impact as possible. And that was that was quite the challenge. And it was really interesting when you stood down there, um, there was some very natural corridors that uh, allowed for these access roads that you could stand there where the amphitheater is proposed to be and see some very natural lanes that, that uh, offered access with actually very little removal of of trees. Actually, we did remove a few, but they were um, in decline and some of them need to be removed for safety reasons anyway. Um, so the, a lot of the access to the building and even the building location itself was uh, was very specific to the impact of the surrounding environment and that. So that was definitely a very major part of the design and, uh, and the location of all of it. The, the building and the roads was uh, very specific to um, the environment. Public comments advocated for further review of the environmental measures set in place for the project. There were concerns about negative environmental impacts on the ecological system at Ceres Park. Plans for breaking ground for the amphitheater are set to start by March 1st, and the amphitheater is scheduled for total completion by November 1st. To stay up to date on this story, visit us at MontrosePress.com. 
And before we go, the Montrose County School District announced last week that after a routine inspection, possible asbestos debris was found in the middle school ceiling at Olathe Middle School and High School. The district shared the discovery of asbestos during the BEST grant application process. The BEST grant would allow the district to use funds to further improve its security systems district-wide, something the community expressed as a goal several years ago. The MCSD Superintendent Carrie Stevenson said that anytime we have the opportunity to access additional funds to improve our safety and security measures, we will continue to do so. The MCSD and the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment are collaborating to identify mitigation strategies based on state regulations as they determine next steps. Stevenson said the timeline is not known currently as they continue the investigation, which includes having the qualified people come inspect the campuses. That process has already begun. She added that the district's COVID-19 conditions are getting to a place where they can consider welcoming all students back in person. It's another reason why the district is taking immediate action to address the asbestos situation to avoid delaying that return. That's all for today, and thank you for listening. For more information on any of these stories, visit us at MontrosePress.com. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Elevate Internet. Visit them at ElevateInternet.com to learn more. For more than 137 years, the Montrose Daily Press has been dedicated to shining a light on all the issues that matter to our community. Go to MontrosePress.com to subscribe for just $1.99 per week for our digital edition. You'll get unlimited access to every story, feature, and special section. Thank you and remember to tune in again next time on MontrosePress.com or wherever you listen to podcasts.